Now, I've had a lot of questions on the table that I use to work on my scooter here. People asking me what it is, how I built it, how can they build one. So I want to give you just a real quick introduction to my scooter workbench, tell you what I built it out of, how to build it, show you some pictures of it. In this case, I did build it out of a half inch sheet of plywood up top. It's got four supports on the bottom, and then just two by fours making up the base of it. It's plenty heavy enough to support the scooters on the table. I could probably roll a motorcycle up on it. I'll tell you a couple of things about this table that I would change. The first one is the length. This is 72 inches long. That's just long enough for us to put the scooters on and still have enough room to rock them up on the center stands. If I was building it again, I'd go longer. One of the nice things when you're buying this plywood, and if you don't know this, now you do, is that at Home Depot, they will rip the plywood for you into your specified dimensions. So you buy an 8x4 sheet of plywood, and you can ask them, hey, can you cut that into a 24 by 78 or 24 by 82 foot piece? And they'll give you all the wood to take home, and then you don't have to try to put it on the table saw or cut it there. It's not always the cleanest cuts in the world, but nothing some sandpaper can't fix. I was fortunate I had this exact dimensions of board, 24 by 72 left over from building my workbench over here. So it's a nice heavy wood, and then I coated it in polyurethane. We'll give you a quick introduction to how it's built, what it looks like, as well as how I take the scooters on and off of the table safely in the garage. I don't use a wooden ramp. I didn't build a ramp for it as much as I would love a motorcycle work table, you know, a lifting bench. I don't have one of those yet, although I am scouring Facebook and Craigslist for one. In this case, I just use Harbor Freight ramps, put them on the back of it, and roll the suckers on up here. I do recommend, and I'll say it again in the video, I'm certain, but you do need two people if you're not familiar with this, or if you're a smaller person, or you're just not confident, having a bike that weighs 200 and some pounds this high up on a table. I'm fortunate I'm no small person, so I can push it up here, I can hang it pretty easily. But we'll go ahead, we'll show you the table, tell you a little bit about it, let me know if you have any questions on it, or what you might want to do for your own. The top of the workbench is a nice half inch sheet of plywood. That's 72 inches long, about 24 inches wide. I did cut out and put this 2x4 on the end, just sort of screwed in, and that gives me something to roll the scooter up against. Make sure that I'm not going to roll it right off the edge, drop it on the floor. I do run it up under power, as we'll see in a few moments here. I coated the whole thing in a brush-on polyurethane. That gives it a little more longevity. It holds up to dirt, debris, brake dust, grime. You can see, I mean, I'm putting the big scooter here on the metal stand, so it's getting a little torn up where the stand is lifting it, or here where my ramps are sitting. I could make two by four ramps or wood ramps that would support it, but for my purposes, you know, even this little chewed up section here from the ramp, not really a big deal. But it's 72 inches long. It's long enough for the scooter. I'd recommend if you're gonna build one, maybe go 76 inches long because the scooters do roll back when you put them up on the center stand. You can put in eye hooks if you want up here or back here. So you can tie the scooter down to it. You've probably seen in some of my videos, I just strap it around the bottom to give it a little bit of support. But with that polyurethane coating, with a handful of deck screws holding it together, the table supports all the scooters just fine. Let's take just a look at a 3D model of the table really quick. I'll flip it up in a moment and show you what it looks like when I'm standing next to it. But just to give you a little bit of an understanding of how it's assembled, it's all 2x4s with that 3 quarter inch of birch plywood up top. We'll cut into some pictures with dimensions as well, just so you can see where I have that spaced out. We've got it up on its side here. We've got four cross supports underneath our big sheet of plywood. One on either end, two in the middle. If I was building this taller, I'd probably put more supports in, especially if I'm going to be putting the big motorcycles on it, weighing closer to four or five hundred pounds. For the little scooters, this does just fine. And our two by four is running across are 21 inches long. On top, we've got our big sheet of plywood. But this is a nice table, pretty easy to move. If I need to flip it up, I can also just lay it back down. Nice, easy thing to work with to move around the garage. And I can store it in the shed, or I can coat the whole thing. I can store it in the trailer, in a shed, 
I guess you could store it outdoors, but that's only if you want to leave your wood workbench outside. Probably not the best option. When it comes to loading our scooter on the table, I use my six foot Harbor Freight ramps. Uh, they were steel and bare and starting to rust, so I have painted them with uh, some Rust-Oleum paint and then a truck bed liner just to give them a little more grip, keep them from getting slippery when it's wet out. As far as bringing the scooter up onto the table goes, it's always advisable to have two people walk the scooter up so that you can push it all the way. You're not going to worry about launching it off into oblivion. I do this on my own. I'm not going to ask my wife to come help me push my scooter on the table every single time. So I bring it up, walking it up under power. And we'll show you what that looks like in a few moments here. You can use, if you so choose, another block of wood. I showed you the little 2x4 I have sitting on the end to keep it from rolling off the edge. This is a little added insurance. Now again, this is a shorter table. It's only 72 inches. That happened to be the size of plywood I had. I would have liked to have probably made it 76 inches for the scooters, maybe closer to 86 inches to put the full-size motorcycles on. We build another table. That's the dimensions we'll go with. Uh, but I've got the whole thing up. Go grab it. I'm going to walk it up under power. I don't have my 2x4 there because I've done this enough times. I'm pretty good at it. So we're just going to walk it up the ramp into place until it bumps against the end here. And then we'll manhandle it onto that center stand. You do want to be careful. It's a heavy scooter. Any of them, even your little Buddy 125, Buddy 50s, they have some weight to them. If you drop it, you're going to have a really bad day. So let's go ahead and put this one up. So you're going to line your front wheel up, slowly walk your foot. So you're going to walk and push the scooter up. Try to keep it as centered on the table as you can. I roll it all the way until it stops. Now all I have to do is keep a hand on the rear brake for now. Put my other hand here on my center stand where you normally put your foot. It's easy for me, I'm a bigger guy, so I can just sort of pop it up onto the center stand. And now our scooter's in a great position to work on it. Our scooter in place, if you want to strap it down, either like I do just around the body of it, or to eyelets that you may put into the side of your workbench. You can certainly do that. I'm not doing anything that's going to require too much bumping it around, so I'm not going to worry about that for today. But definitely something to consider, especially if you're going to leave it for a while, or if you're just worried about, hey, making sure you're as safe as possible, throw a couple straps to hold it down to the table. You do want to avoid letting the scooter roll forward when you're working on it, because that's going to knock it off the center stand. So for that, I've got a doorstop from Walmart. With the scooter on the center stand, I can take my Walmart doorstop and just chock it under the front wheel. It's an easy wheel chock. It'll keep the scooter from wanting to roll forward if I bump it, and that'll keep anything from coming off the end of our table. Here at the back, you can see my rear wheel is really just on the edge of the table. I could have probably pushed it a little farther forward when I was putting it up here, but that's why I'd want to give us an extra four inches or so on the back end, just so that everything is well over the table. It's still pretty solid. The table displaces the weight nicely, but certainly something to consider if you're going to build this at home. Once I've got it up, I take the ramp out of the way. That way I have more access as I roll around on the scooter. Now that I've got the scooter up on the table, it's easy for me to wheel around on my little convertible creeper here. I can get to any part of the motorcycle I need to. I can get underneath. I can still access the controls if I'm testing stuff there, adjusting throttle cables, that sort of thing. We can put a jack stand underneath it. To lift it up and get the front wheel off the ground to do brakes, tires, any of that sort of thing. But it's a pretty straightforward process to work on the scooter when you've got everything at eye level. You've got a nice workbench you can put tools, parts lists, diagrams on, your phone if you need to look at the videos that I'm making or if you're looking at manuals, anything like that. But with everything up here, the scooter's still pretty solid. I don't advise you climb on it, don't hang on it, but try to ride it off. But with it up on the bench, Pretty great way to be able to work on your scooters, on your motorcycles, on anything you have to do, not hurting your back, not crawling around on the ground. Keeps things a little cleaner as well. You can wipe up the table, sweep it all off. With the setup though, and our polyurethane coating, if I drop gas, if I spill things, yeah, my feet are eating up the table a little bit, but it's a piece of wood. I can go to Home Depot, I can buy a new one, slap it on there. To get the scooter off of the table, it's going to be pretty much the opposite of what we just did. We set the ramp up at the back of the scooter, right under that rear wheel, so it's a straight shot off. We're going to go around to the other side of the scooter, remove 
our wheel chock or door stop in my case. And now we have to rock the scooter forward to get the center stand out of the way. To rock the scooter forward off of the stand, we want to make sure we don't just let it fall off the front of the table. To make sure that doesn't happen, we cover the rear brake, and as soon as the scooter is down, that rear wheel is going to stop it from going any further. Again, maybe two people, if you're not used to it, or if you're just of smaller stature. In my case, I just cover the rear brake, rock the scooter forward, and just like that, it drops off and now we're ready to walk it down the back of the ramp. Walking it down the ramp is just a matter of watching your back as it feeds and working the rear brake to control the acceleration of the scooter. You can always peek down, see what sort of shape your rear wheel is in. If maybe you're a little off the line, you can push it back up the scooter and steer down a little bit different. And you just keep coming back all the way down the ramp as your rear tire gets towards the bottom, you want to make sure you're thinking about that front tire, that it's still going to stay on the ramp. Bring it down gently. You can switch to using the front brake. It gives you a little more control as it descends. And just walk it right off the ramp. Whip the scooter off the table. I can pick up my ramp and you can put it wherever you store yours. You can store it under the table. I store mine right here at the top because of how often I work on the scooters. And the beautiful thing about a table made out of wood like this is that it's still pretty lightweight. So I can take it, push it off to the side of the garage, and just like that, the scooter is ready to go and I can come back and work on my next project. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to help you build one of these for yourself.